So we need to find the measure of DCE, and you need to make sure you know where DCE is. So let me grab a pencil here, and we go from D to C to E. So we're talking about this angle right here for D to C to E. Um, hopefully you have noticed that there is a little square right here, and so that is 90 degrees. And from our background knowledge, we know that the angle from here all the way over to right there is 180 degrees. And so if we want to find this missing piece right here, we know that all three of these added together have to make 180 degrees. So that means that you're going to have 72 degrees plus 90 degrees plus x degrees, the one we don't know, has to be equal to 180. And so to solve this problem, you're going to take those two and combine them. So 90 plus 72 is 162. And then you can subtract the 162 from both sides. And when you do that, the 162s cancel out, the x drops straight down, the equal sign drops straight down, and 180 minus 62, well, that's going to be borrow 1 from the 8, make that into a 10, so that's going to be 18 degrees. So our missing angle there is 18 degrees using, using our um, course, our consecutive, I'm not going to type this, I'm going to... I'm going to type this. That's what I'm just going to say. Consecutive adjacent um, angles on angles on a line, and that was what we called this thing: consecutive adjacent angles on a line. Okay, let's look at the next part. So, in your books, you should find the total measure of an adjacent angles around a point. So if we are the whole way around the point, we should go a whole 360 degrees. Because there are 360 degrees around a circle, so there's 360 degrees around the point. So find the measure of angle HKI. So again, let's find HKI. So H down to K over to I. So we're talking about this angle right here. Okay? And we are going the whole way around. So if I start here and go the whole way around and go back where I started, that should be 360 degrees based on what we just covered right here. That if we go the whole way around the point, it is a 360 degrees. So that means that I should be able to take the 133, add it to the 147, add it to whatever this one over here is, and I should get 360 degrees. So then I need to combine those two terms. So that's going to be a 0. There is a 1. So 3 and 4 is 7, 8. And so that's going to be 280 plus y is equal to 360. And then I subtract the 280 from both sides. And the 280s drop out, the y comes straight down, and you get 0 minus 0 is 0. Borrow 1 from the 3, make that into a 16, and you get 80 degrees. So this missing angle here would be 80 degrees. The next idea is vertical angles. And if we look at the beginning of our uh, the background knowledge, the very first thing was vertical angles. And vertical angles have to be the same equal measures. So two angles are vertical if their sides form opposite rays, which basically just means if you have two lines, one line here and one line here, and they intersect, that the angle on this side and the angle on that side have to be the same measure or equal measures. So find the measure of TRV. So T to R. So V is that one. And if we just extend this line that I've drawn here, and we extend this line that I've drawn here, you see that we do in fact have two lines that cross. And if we've got two lines that cross, then we have vertical angles. So that means that this angle over here has to be 52 degrees 
because they are vertical, vertical angles. And I forgot to read it right in my reason on that last one, so let's go back. Uh, this one, we said that it was angles around a point. So this was, oh, let me not do that. Consecutive adjacent, spread that out. Consecutive adjacent angle around a point. Okay, consecutive adjacent angles around a point. And this one is vertical angles, and that one's a um, consecutive adjacent angles on a line. So we've got a line, so it's 180. We've got all the way around, so it's 360. And we've got across from each other with intersecting lines, so they're the same. Those are our three ideas we're working with. Okay, so we need to fill this in with our examples here. And so um, if this is 145, how are we going to find A? We decided um, in our definitions from background knowledge that if two angles make a straight line, we call that a linear pair. Okay, so that's a linear pair. And linear pairs add up to 180. They're supplementary. So that means that these two angles together have to be 180 degrees. So if you take 180 and you subtract 145, you had to borrow one, so that's a 7. So that is a 3. So the other angle has to be 35 degrees. Okay, in the next picture, um, if we want to look at angle B, angle B is right here. Or the yep, so we want angle uh, this angle measured 40. And how are we going to get to there? Well, we have a line that's cutting straight through here. So these two are a linear pair. So it's a linear pair to the one that um, measures angle of 40. And so the linear pair, we know that those have to add to 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract 40, I get 140 degrees. So this angle measure is 140 degrees. So let me take an eraser here. Where'd my eraser go? And we're going to erase this off so we can clean it up a little bit. And write in this 140 degrees. Okay, so if we want to get to angle C, I could do this two ways. I could either take these two as being a linear pair, or C and 40 are vertical angles. So we are a vertical angle. the one that's measured is angle of 40 degrees. And since they are vertical angles, we know vertical angles have the same measure, so this has to be 40 degrees, and we don't really need to do any work. And then if we look at D, so we can fill this part in, this is 40 degrees, because we just figured that out. We want angle D here, so we want to find its measure. So we could do linear pair here, or we could do linear pair this way. Or we can go vertical that way. So this would be vertical. Angle. To. Angle B. And since it's a vertical to angle B, it has the same measure as angle B. And so it also is 140 degrees. And the last picture across the top there. Um, if we've got this 122 and we're trying to find from here all the way around and back to there, and we already have this piece from here to here, we're basically going the whole way around. And since we're going the whole way around, this is um, angles and it's consecutive adjacent, so angles around. a point, and angles around a point give you 360 degrees. And so in order to get the missing part, if this part's 122, then the rest of it needs to be 360 minus 122. So 
So that's an 8. We borrowed 1 from a 6 and made it a 4. So 4 minus 2 is 2. And 3 minus 2, uh, 3 minus 1 is 2. So that has to be 228 degrees. I did that really wrong. Hold on. Let's try subtracting again. Okay. Um, 10 minus 2 is 8. But if I borrow 1, that's only a 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So how about 238 for a measure? 238. And to check your work, you can always take the 238 and the 122. So 238 and the 122. And if you add them back together, 0, that would be a 10. Carry the 1. 3, 4, 5, 6. And 360. And we're back where we started, which is good. I've checked my work. It does work this time. Okay, so then uh, exercises 1 through 2, I want you to work it and then check your answer when you get back. So what you're supposed to do is find the measure of the angle, give the reason for it, and show all your work. So pause the video and do problem number 1. Okay, problem number 1, you should have written that it's a linear pair. And we would take that this is 180 degrees. So you take 180, subtract 144, and 0 minus 4 is 10 minus 4, which is 6. We borrowed 1, so that 7 minus 4 is 3. And so A should be 36 degrees. Linear pair showed my work, and the degrees is 36 degrees for A. So again, pause the video, try this second one, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, on this one, we are still at 180 degrees. Um, instead of linear pair, because pair means two, this is consecutive adjacent adjacent angles on a line. And consecutive adjacent angles on a line all make 180 degrees when you add them together. So I can take the 97, add it to the 36, add that to the B, and when I add them all together, I should get 180 degrees. So then you can combine your like terms. So 7 and 6 is 13, carry the 1, so that would be 133, plus B is 180. And then you'd subtract the 133 from both sides. And B would be equal to um, 10 minus 3 is 7. We borrowed 1, got made that a 7. 7 minus 3 is 40. So B should be 47 degrees. So try number 3. Come back and check your work when you're done. Okay, I'm going to be really smart about this. Not only do we have the um, ones we had from background knowledge, a few slides ago in the first day's activities, we learned about something called complementary. And complementary are two angles that add, or angles that add together to give you 90 degrees. And you know if this whole thing is 180, and this piece right here is 90, then this piece over here, this piece from here to there, has to be 90 degrees. So instead of adding all of this up and setting it equal to 180, I'm just going to add these three up and set it equal to 90. So that's 40 plus 36 plus C is 90 degrees. And then combine my like terms, so that's 76 plus C is 90. Subtract the 76 from both sides. Notice how I'm showing all my work. And so the C drops down. Um, this would be 10 minus 6 is 4. We borrowed 1. And 8 minus 7 is 1. So this should be 14 degrees for C. So that little piece right there is 14 degrees. Okay, pause the video and try this next one. OK, 
Okay, so this one is also angles, uh, consecutive adjacent angles. So let me, I'm going to type that because I can type better. Consecutive adjacent angles at a, uh, on a line, on a line. Okay, so we've got consecutive adjacent angles on a line. And that means that they have to add up to 180. And so I have D plus 82 plus D equals 180. And so if I combine my like terms, D plus D is 2D plus 82 equals 180. Then you can subtract the 82 from both sides. Remember, that's both sides of your equal sign. The 2D drops straight down because I've done nothing with it. My equal sign drops straight down, and I'm going to subtract. So 10 minus 2 is 8. And then I'm going to borrow and make this into a 17. And 17 minus 8 is 9. Now, I'm not done because I still have that 2 there. So then I need to divide by 2. And 98 divided by 2, and if you can't do that in your head, we come over here and we do this little thing here. So 2 goes into 9 four times. That would be 8. With 1 left over, bring down your 8. And you get a 9. So this is equal to 49 degrees for each one of these Ds. So this is 49 degrees over here. And this is 49 degrees over on the other side. Both of them are 49 degrees. Okay, so here's problem number five. Take a moment, pause the video, try it on your own. Come back and see how we did. Okay, so there's a couple different ways to do this. Most of you would have taken and added the 91 plus the G, the G plus another 91 plus a G, plus another 91 plus a G, and figured out that that took us the whole way around, right? 91 and G, 91 and G, 91 and G. And going the whole way around is 360 degrees. So you could set this equal to 360, and you could solve it. But I'm smarter than that, and I'm going to do this the slick way. And so the slick way is to say, hey, Here's a 91 and G, here's a 91 and G, and here's a 91 and G. I have three of those, right? This 91 with the G, this 91 with the G, and that 91 with the G. They all have to be the exact same thing. So instead of adding this all up and dealing with 360, I'm going to take my 360 and I'm going to divide it by 3 because there's three even parts here. And each one is made up of the same stuff. So 360 divided by 3 is 120. So that means that 91 plus G has to be equal to 120, right? This is 120, this is 120, and this is 120. There's nothing wrong with solving it the way I have in green. Just this way, it's a lot faster. All I have to do now is subtract 91 from both sides, and I have finished this problem. So the G comes straight down, and 91, 120 minus 91, so 10 minus 1 is 9, and we borrowed 1 from the 12 and made it an 11. 11 minus 9 is 2, and so G has to be 29 degrees. So this G is 29, and this G is 29, and this G is 29. Okay, here's number 6. Pause the video, give it a try, come back when you're ready. Okay, we also have all of these angles around a point. So all the angles around the point give you 360. Okay, so angles around, or yep, angles around a point. Around a point, sum to 360. Okay, so that's my justification. And then I just need to actually do that math. So I have... Um, I've got a 2x, and I've got an 85, and I have an x, 
and I have a 35. And when I add them all together, I get that 360 for going the whole way around the circle. So then I'm going to add like terms. So 2x and x is 3x. And 85 and 35 would be um, 5 and 5 is 0, carry the 1. So that's 8 and 3 plus 1 more, which is 8 and 4 is 12. And so that's going to be equal to the 360 that I had. Then I'm going to subtract 120 from both sides. And 3x is going to be equal to 0. 6 minus 2 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. And then you divide both sides by the 3. And so x is equal to 80 degrees. So this is 80 degrees. But this one's 2x, so this is twice that. So that one over there has to be 2 times 80, or 160 degrees. Right? So 2x would be 2 times, wow, this is not working really well. 2x would be equal to 2 times 80, which is 160. Okay, so this one's 160, and this one's 80. Okay, hey, again, pause the video. Come back when you're ready. All right, this one's a little bit more tricky. We have X's and Y's. Here's an X and a Y. Here's an X and a Y. Here's an X. Here's nothing. And you've got to figure this problem out. And there is a way to do this. So um, what you're looking for here is a way to make an equation that only has one variable in it. And there is a way. And if you notice, this is a positive x and this is a negative x. And if I add these two together, x minus x is 0. And so if I add these two pieces together this way, those x's are going to go away. And that's what I'm going to do. So I've got a linear pair here. So this is a linear pair. Okay, so with my linear pair, I have the equation y plus x plus y minus x equals to 180 degrees. And like I said before, this positive x and this negative x cancel and become 0. So your final equation would be this y added to that y, so that's 2y and it's equal to 180. And then you divide both sides by 2. And when you divide by 2, you get y is equal to 90 degrees. Now you're not done, because that's not really what it asks for. It asks for this y plus x, this y minus x, and this 2x. So we still don't know how to solve this thing quite yet, because we still have y in there, and we've got x in there at the same time. But if you look at this a different way, going from this line, this CD line, that this 2x added this x plus y could be equal to 180 also. So I can take 2x plus y plus x and set that equal to 180 because of the linear pair going the other way. So this is 180 degrees here. You said, well, wait, there's still an y in there. But we already know what y is. y is 90. So I can take that 90 and put it right there. So now I have this 2x and that x, which makes a 3x. This y is actually 90, so I can put the 90 in there. And it's equal to 180. Then you're set. This one's easy from here. Subtract the 90 from both sides and you get 3x is equal to 90, and then divide both sides by 3. And you get x is equal to 30. Okay, So now we know x is 30. Oh, but this is 2x. So that means that 2 times 30 equals 60, 
So this is 60 degrees here. These are vertical angles, so this is 60 degrees. You know, y is 90, right? And that would make sense. 90 minus x, x was 30, 90 minus 30 is 60. And if this one is 90 plus 30, that one has to be 120 degrees from here to there. And there's our final answer. This angle here, this ang A to the center to C is 60 degrees. A to the center to D is 120 degrees. And D to the center back to B is 60 degrees. A little bit more difficult. So, continuing on. Here is exercise 8. So give it a try. See what you come up with. See if you can do that one. Okay, so hopefully you've tried this one. You saw that this is 90 degrees. You filled in your 90 degrees. Um, this CD is one line. This AB is another line. They intersect. These two are vertical, so this is 90 down here. So now you have to figure out what else to do here. Um, well, I've got another set of vertical lines. I've got AB coming this way with FE going that way. So if I'm carefully draw this in. Okay, so there's a set of vertical lines which means that this 4x, this 4x minus 10 has to fit in this wedge, in this angle, this E to the center to A angle. Now if this is 90 and CD is a line, then I know that from this ray over to that ray it has to be 90 also. So now I can add these two pieces together. So that's 4x minus 10 plus x and that's going to give me 90 degrees. So then I can add this together and solve it like a normal problem. So 4x plus x is 5x. And then I'm going to subtract off the 10 and get 90. Add 10 to both sides of my equal sign. And you have 5x equals to 90 plus 10 is 100 and then divide by 5 on both sides and you get x and that's an x right there is equal to 100 divided by 5 is 20 so x is 20 degrees so this piece right here is 20 degrees and so um, you could put the 4 times 20 minus 10 if you want which would be 80 minus 10 or 70 degrees or if you know that this little piece is 20 you know the whole piece is 90 you could take 90 minus the 20 and you still get the 70 degrees for this other piece so either way this is 70 degrees so x is 20 degrees and this other piece is 70 degrees okay we're getting a little bit more complicated so try number nine on your own and come back when you are done Okay, hey, filling stuff in, we've got lots of vertical angles. So I know that this angle here is vertical. So I can fill this across as x minus 10. And that's pretty much how I start all these problems, is I start with looking for vertical angles or any kind of supplementary or complementary 180s or 1360s or 90s that I can get. Um, so then after I've got that part, let me erase this line off of here. Now that you see where that x minus 10 got in there from. And I'm going to draw in another line. I'm going to draw this EF line. And you can see this is a line, so that's 180 degrees here. So that means these three pieces added together should give me 180 degrees. So if I take this first one, so that's a 3x plus 6, and I add it to the second one, which is my x minus 10, and I add it to my third one, which is this x minus 11, 
the whole thing added together should be 180 degrees. Right? So the green piece plus the red piece plus the blue piece should give you 180 degrees because that's all of your pieces. So then I can combine my like terms. 3x plus x plus x. So 3x, 4x, 5x. I have 5 total x's. I've got a 6, a minus 10, and a minus 11. So let's just write that plus 6. Minus 10 and minus 11 make a minus 21. And if you can combine that all in one step, you're more than welcome to. So then I have 6 minus 21, so that's 5x. And that's going to be a minus uh, 15. Then you're re ready to add 15 to both sides of your equal sign. And so you get 5x is equal to 195. And then divide by 5, divide by 5. And you get x is equal to 5 goes into 19. That would be 3 times, so that's 15. And 15, that would be a 4 here. And then 5 goes into 45, 9 times. So x is 39. So 39, so if x is 39, then I want to go back up to my green part here. So actually I'll go to the blue part, that's easier. So if x is 39, this would be 39 minus 11, or 28 degrees for there, which means that this is 28 degrees over here, right? Filling in my vertical angles across there. Um, this is an x plus 10, so that's, I'm going to do that one in red. So that's 39 plus 10. So that makes this one 49 degrees, which makes this piece right there 49 degrees. And then we just need this piece up here. So we can fill that in. So that's 3 times... 39, because x was 39, plus 6. So 3 times 9 is 27, carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. Add the 6, and you get 123 degrees. You also could have taken 180 and subtracted the 49, and then subtracted the 28. You still should get 123 degrees for this piece right here. Okay. One more step harder. Let's go to fractions. Fractions are fun. So try this problem out with fractions and come back and see how you did. Okay, I'm going to work smart instead of hard. I know that this line right here splits this as 180 degrees. I also know that this piece right here is 90. So if this whole thing is 180 and that little piece is 90, then these other two pieces have to be equal to whatever 180 minus 90 is. And hopefully you know that that is 90. Oops. Minus 90. And you get 90. That is not working. Let's try that again. This is 90. So this little piece up here and that little piece down there added together should give you 90. So that means that 2 fifths x plus 3 fourths x minus 2 is equal to 90 degrees. So then you've got to add your fractions to get your like terms combined. So when you add fractions, you've got to get a common denominator. So a common denominator between 5 and 4 is going to be a 20. So that means I've got to multiply this times 4, top and bottom, to get to the 20 there. So that's going to be an 8x. And I'm going to have to multiply this top and bottom by 5 to get to the 20. So that's going to be a 15 on the top. Okay, so then you can add your fractions. Since they have common denominators, 8 and 15 is 23. 
So we've got 23 20ths x uh, minus 2 is equal to 90. Add the 2 to both sides. And you get 23 over 20 is equal to 92. And if this were an ideal world, oops, I need my x here, this would work out nice and perfectly. So let's see what happens. In order to get rid of a fraction, you have to flip it and multiply, or multiply by its reciprocal. And that works because the 20 divided by the 20 is 1, and the 23 divided by the 23 is 1, and you get 1x. So I am going to multiply this side by the 20 over the 23. And fraction lines mean divide. This means divide. So I am going to divide by 23. So I'm going to take this 92 and see if it divides by 23. So 92 divided by 23. And I'm going to guess that 4 might be pretty close. So if I put a 4 up there, 4 times 3 is 12. Carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So it does, in fact, go in evenly. So that means when I reduce this 92 with this 23, I get a 4 up here. So these 23s cancel to get a 1. Those 20s divide to get a 1. So you get a 1x on this side, and you get a 4 on the other side. So x is 4. So that wasn't so bad. So then you can go back up here and figure out what your angles are. So you have, up on this side, you've got 2 fifths times 4. And that's 4 over 1, so that's actually going to be 8 fifths. So that's kind of a tiny angle. Oops, I forgot a part. Um, I forgot about this 20 right here. So that's times 20. That makes more sense. So x is going to be equal to 80. 80 is a much better number. So let's go back up and try that again. So let me erase this part right here. So I'm taking 2 fifths times 80, which means I'm going to divide by the 5. 80 divided by 5. Um, so 5 goes into 8 uh, one time with 3 left over. So that's going to be 16. So I'm going to take 2 times 16. And so that's going to be 32 degrees right there. So that's 32 degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So that's 3 fourths times our x, which we decided was 80, unless we got it correct. And then subtract 2. So 80 divided by 4 is 20. So 3 times 20, this is 60 minus 2, or this one is 58 degrees, right? And that's 58. So this angle here is 58, that angle there is 32, and if you add those two together, you should get 90. Okay, number 11, we are almost done with the exercises. So try this one on your own, come back and see how you did. Okay, the way I did this one is I looked and saw that this was a line here. So this one is 180 degrees as a linear pair. So if I take 180 and I subtract off the 68, 10 minus 8 is 2. I had borrowed 1 from that, made it a 7. 7 minus 6 is 1, bring down the 1. So that means that this angle right here is 112 degrees. So I'm going to clean this up and put in the 112. Okay, so then we have to figure out what x is. So I have another linear pair, or another set of angles that add together to give me 180. So those three give me 180. So that's the 112 plus the 4x minus 2 plus the 30 that gives me 180. Right, consecutive adja adjacent angles on a line. They give you 180 degrees. So then if I add this all together, I'm going to have 112 
minus 2, right, so that's 110, and then add that to 30, so that's 140, and don't forget your 4x in the front. So 4x plus 140 is 180, so then I can subtract my 140 from both sides, and you get 4x is equal to 40, 4x, and then you divide both sides by 4, and x is equal to 10. Okay, so we used two sets of, or a set of linear pair and a consecutive adjacent angles on a line to get us our equations. Um, x is 10. We already know y is 112, so this would be 4 times 10 minus 2, so 40 minus 2 would be 38 degrees. Okay, so 38 degrees, 112 degrees. Last one! Woohoo! So try this one on your own. Come back and check your answer. Okay, I've got a vertical angle. I'm going to fill this 8 ninths up in here. Just because it makes it easier. I don't know if it's going to help us at all. Um, actually, I don't think we needed that. Um, doesn't matter. We could look at this as this line EF with these three angles added together to give us 180. Or we could have left it the way it was. And, oops, that didn't go like a line at all. Um, let me just grab a, a segment here. <laughs> or I could be grabbing that one. And I still have the same three numbers, or three, three angles added together. And I still get 180. So I'm going to add those three together and set them equal to 180. So that's a 2x plus 1, a 3x plus 10, and an 8 ninths x plus 10. And all of those together make 180 degrees. So combine all your like terms. So 2x plus 3x is 5x. And 5 plus 8 ninths is 5 and 8 ninths x. So then we have 1 plus 10 plus 10. And 1 plus 10 plus 10 is 21. And there's my 180. So just like normal, you would subtract your 21 from both sides of your equal sign. And you get 5 and 8 ninths x equals to 10 minus 1 is 9. We borrowed 1 from 8, made it 7. Subtracted 2, so that's a 5. So that's 159. Okay, so now what? Well, we have to multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of that. But in order to do that, you have to have it in a fraction form instead of a mixed number form. So to do that, we take 5 times 9 is 45, right, 45, and then you add that 8 to it. And so when you add that 8, you get 53. So that is 53 ninths x is equal to 159. And so I said when we are getting rid of a fraction, we have to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 9 53rds. And I do that to both sides of my equal sign. And again, in a perfect world, 53 will evenly divide into 159 because fraction lines mean divide. And so if I take 159 and I divide by my 53, and I'm going to guess at some great number like because I'm looking 5 times 3 is 15. And we'll try it. 3 times 3 is 9. And, yep, 5 times 3 is 15, so it does work. So 3. So whenever I reduce this thing, 159 divided by 53 is 3. And the 53 divided by 53 is 1. 9 divided by 9 is 1. So this becomes 1x is equal to 3 times 9 which is equal to 27. So we've got 27 for x. 
So this would be 22 times 27 plus 1. Um, so that's going to be 40, 55 degrees. So that's 55 degrees. All right, 40, oh, 54, 55, yep, that's good. And then this one is going to be 3 times 27 plus 10. So 3 times 7 is 21, carry the 2, 6, 7, 8, so that's 81 plus 10. So that one is 91 degrees. So if you were guessing it was a right angle, you were off. And then I'm going to take 8 ninths times 27. So 8 ninths times 27. Let's put that over here. 8 ninths times 27. Again, I can reduce that and make it into a 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. So that's going to be a 24 plus 10. So that is 34. Four degrees here. Okay, so that's that side done. Now, if you look at this, we have a linear pair again. Let me get rid of this red line. Actually, let's just move this red line. We'll put it here. So that one goes there, and we'll add another red line with it. And you can see that this corner up here is the same as these two added together. So this one up here was 91 degrees, right? This 91 degrees. And so 91 degrees is going to be the same thing as that y minus 3 plus the y. And so 91 degrees is going to be equal to 2y minus 3. And I can move this thing out of the way. Put it over there. It would be great if you could do that with your paper. So then add 3 and add 3. And you get 94 is equal to 2y. And then you divide by 2 and divide by 2. And 9 goes into 4. or 9, 9 divided by 2 is 4 with 1 left over. So that's 87. So y is 47 degrees. So we've got 47 degrees here, and this is 47 minus 3, so this would be 44 degrees. And we've got them all done.